Well, good morning, everyone. It's so good to see each and every one of you. I hope that you came prepared uh, today. This, this week's message won't be as, I guess, hard on the knees, if you will, as uh, last week. I'm really looking forward to getting into that last chapter of Galatians chapter 5, and uh, we'll be turning there very shortly. But again, I just want to welcome each and every one of you. If you're here visiting with us, whether you're here in person or if you're online, please feel free to connect with me. I would love to, to connect. I would love to get to know you. And even our church people, it's been so good getting to know each and every one of you. The longer we're here, the more we get to relate to each other, and uh, it's just been, been a blessing. But if you will, let's all stand, and we're going to open in a word of prayer, and then we'll get into our worship this morning. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you again, Lord, for giving us this freedom to gather in your house this morning. I pray that as we join together as a church, that Lord, as we worship you, as we praise you, as we sing to you, that it will be a sweet smelling savor into your, uh, into your throne room. Father, I pray that all glory will be given to you. All praise will be glorified to you. Help us to make your name large today and magnify you. Bless this time of worship. Bless this time as we open up your word. And we learn more about you through Galatians 6. Bless this time, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing as we sing. Well, good morning. We sing glory to our God, glory to our King, because of his love for us, and um, really because he is creator of all, and he is God. That's, that's what he deserves. So we give him our best from our hearts this morning. To God be the glory. Remain standing with us as we continue to sing to our King. Thank you. 
We're thankful to be here to praise you and worship you this morning. God, you are our savior. You are our protector. You are a whole lot of things that we read about in your word. And we, when we know you and we experience those things, uh, we know um, uh, who you are. We know your character and we praise you and sing to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Greet the neighbors, you're being seated this morning. Well, hey, it is good to see everybody here this morning. If you're joining us online, it's great to have you as well. Let's run through our bulletins real quick. Keep FBT clubs in your prayer. We are going to make an attempt to get this rolling. Now, we've had a lot of delays and a few setbacks on the new FBT center, but we won't be a Debbie Downer today. We'll just take it as it is and that's going to be a great tool to minister with to our community. But for now, we're going to make an attempt to start FBT clubs in this building. All right? So pray for us because it's, be, it's going to be a challenge. I guess I better get my bulletin open, hadn't I? Shoebox. Um... Workshop. Who's in, who's in charge of the shoebox? Who's me? You? Okay. Is, is it Mrs. Peggy Dague? Is she she's still in charge of it? Julie. Ju oh, sorry. Okay. Julie Russell. So make sure you contact her and she'll let you know what you need for that and what to do. And then it looks like there's a uh, young women's night out on October 8th. Uh, you can take a look at that. It's at Erica Heater's home, and um, it looks like they're going to be the 20s to the 40s. So, uh, Mrs. Erica is over there, so you can contact her about that. Uh, the Gideon will be here October 10th, and um, the concert October 17th. Keep that in your in your on your calendar as well. And then this uh, secret pantry thing, I guess. I don't know how secret it is now, but. You can see Kristen about that. So we have a list. Uh, you might keep that uh, birthday list there in front of you. Um, I'll tell you what. That, that month of October was a great month for mankind, wasn't it? Well, wait a minute, I'm on that list. <laughs> it could have been a great month or a bad month, huh? But... You see there, uh, Ruth Reed is going to turn 100. That's, that's pretty amazing. And then also the anniversary is there as well. Are there any other announcements that need to be added to that part? Okay, we'll, we'll get that here on the back, okay? Thank you. All right, if you turn to your back of the bulletins, uh, there are a lot of people that need your prayers. Don's recovering and... Uh, Vicki Hudson as well, and then those with uh, test results and, and going through their different surgeries and illnesses, and and um, Eli as he gets that uh, wrist on the is it the wrist on the mend and okay so keep him in your prayers and I see he might he's got his right hand broke so he might have to convert to being a lefty. That's that's a difficult thing. You ever try a right hand person ever try to do something a left hand person does? But uh, that's hard to do. Anybody else on that list that needs to be added? Okay.
Okay, so keep Wendy's family in your prayers as someone's dealing with some tumors and cancer. Anybody else? Ushers, if you come forward, please. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again, Lord, for your love for us, for the mighty God that you are, Lord. And, and Lord, for the, you are the God who has made each one of us. You've created us in a special way, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, for the life that you give us. And as, Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ, your son, whom you sent to die on that cross for our sins and the salvation that we have in him, Lord. And as a church, Lord, as a body of believers, help us to take that message to our community, to take it with a loving heart, with those we work with, or even in our own families, or, or wherever that opportunity arises to witness, Lord. Help us to do that. And Lord, for this land that you've put us in, and Lord, our country's struggling in many ways with sin, and I pray, Lord, that you would help us as people to understand that you are the God, you are the one who, who has written the moral laws and that we need to abide by them. So help us, Lord, as people in this country to obey you, and to understand your ways. Lord, as we give back a portion to what you've given to us, we, we're so thankful, Lord, that you give to us and that you meet our needs. Help us to give with glad hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. would stand with us as we continue this morning. I want to read Psalm chapter 103. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our iniquity, who heals all our diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The, Lord's work, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. 
He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. And we all say, okay, let me read that again a second here. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. So wonderful is his unfailing love that he does not do that. He's the wonderful savior that we sing to this morning. Last one this morning, oh praise the name. Again, I love this. It's the story of Jesus because the word of God is about Jesus. It's about what he did. Um, we happen to be the beneficiaries of that. And we happen to be, um, we get the benefit from his love for us. But we think about what happened on Calvary and we look to that. We have to look to that on a daily basis. Sometimes on an hourly, sometimes every minute of every day, we look to that because we know that we can't, we know we've got a problem and we don't, we can't fix it on our own, right? But he fixes it every single time without end, without fault, without, um, as it says, from the east is to the west. Oh, praise the name. <clears throat> I cast my mind to Calvary. Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears.
fields of white, the blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints, my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. glad you joined us today. We'll see you next week. No, I'm just kidding. You may have a seat. Jeremy is next, but we'll, uh, the children second grade and under are dismissed for junior church as well. Man, you can't do that to me, but I had a heart attack. We're just getting to the good parts of Galatians. Galatians 6 in your Bibles, Galatians chapter 6 in your Bibles. If you're looking at the back of your bulletin, Look at the common word that's all throughout. Brother St. Clair, recovering. Miss Vicky, recovering. Dave Emery, recovering. Linda Klaus, recovering. So many people within our church family have gone through so much this summer. Brother Mark, recovering. Brother Hal, recovering here today. So good to see you, my brother. On and on we could go. Church, we need to lift up each other up in prayer. What helps get our church family through is prayer. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is helping hands. Helping one another get through the hard times in life. Last week was a pretty intense message. Um, there at the end of Galatians 5, listing all of the sins and the falling over them and failing at times and we think that there's nothing for us because I just keep falling, I keep failing, I keep not succeeding in this Christian walk. And that's where our church comes into play. Again, our theme for this year has been more than bricks and remember church, we're more than just this building. A brand new building just down the road is being created, but that's not Fulton Baptist Temple. 106 West Dunn Street, this is not Fulton Baptist Temple. This is the people on the back of our prayer list. It's the, the people that make up our church. And if we're not praying for them, we're really letting them down. So we cannot cease to pray. We cannot cease to minister. We cannot cease to fellowship. And all that, I do want to say a hearty thank you for all those that have been participating in the, the uh, meal ministry of uh, the meal train. Uh, because I know when Cody was born, uh, what a blessing it was for our family to, to go through that. And every other day, food come in, and it was always uh, a mystery. Oh, what's for dinner tonight? And uh, you all can cook. I can guarantee you that. I did not lose any weight during those uh, times, and uh, thank you for that. And the, there's three different meal trains out, I believe, right now. I'm, I think all of the slots are filled. Uh, but as we're made aware, or if you can help us be aware of, of folks within our church that, that could benefit from that, uh, please let us know. And we would, and, uh, we would love to, to get something like that set up for your family. And that's a way for us to help you. Uh, let us help you. Let us be involved in your life. And let us pray for you. It's hard for us to minister to you if we do not know what's going on. And, and I know that it's, it's hard for myself uh, to, to keep in touch with everybody, especially with all the illnesses going on. And, and please help me with that. Uh, I'm asking you to help me with that. If there's anything going on, please call us. Let us know. And I would love to be a blessing to you where we can. 
Uh, on, uh, with that note, again, that's all what this message is going to be about this morning. It's, it's helping heal a broken spirit. And uh, those of you that have the, the kids, uh, hold them up real, real tall, all the kids with the, 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 special, the special papers. If you need one of those, head in the back on the, one of the slides. Kids, one of the slides, there's a special key word. If you catch it, write it down at the top of the page, and I'll give you an extra piece of candy. But it's kind of hidden, so you've got to kind of look for it. So hopefully you're not colorblind, because it really matches one of the colors. But anyway, all the adults are like, I'm going to get that key word. If you get that key word and you want a piece of candy, uh, let me know. If your sugar is low, let me know, and we'll help you jack that back up. Tiff bought a new assortment of candy this week, so it's new candy in the pastor's pail bucket. Uh, so that should be a blessing to you. Uh, so again, see me after if you'd like a, a piece of candy, but you have to fill out the notes. Uh, but on we go. Onward to Galatians chapter 6. Brothers, church family, the four churches that this letter is being written to. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in spirit of gentleness, keeping watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor, for each will have to bear his own load. As we get into this message, thinking about how that our spiritual strength can help one another. This past week in Caston Christian Club, uh, I almost used that illustration, Danielle, because I liked it so much, what you used on Thursday. But she had each kid, she had, she had uh, people, she had uh, teams of two, and one kid had a spaghetti noodle that the kids kept wanting to eat, and then the other one had uh, Cheerios. And the goal was to stack 10 Cheerios on top, and uh, they faced off and they went at each other and, and it was neat to see them compete and whatnot. But she was trying to illustrate at the end, she did a little interview, which one was more important, the person holding or the person stacking the Cheerios. And well, the kids even agree. They said, well, I couldn't have done my part if it wasn't for you holding the spaghetti noodle. If you were going like this, it would be hard for me to stack. Or if the person couldn't quite line up the Cheerio to the noodle, that, so they're equally as important. And so what she was trying to illustrate was the importance of working together as one body. As one body. The toe is just as important as the finger. The feet are as important as the hands. Christ is the head of the church, so he is ultimately important. But we cannot say, the eye can't say to the ear, well, I'm just going to be an ear today. I don't want to be an eye anymore. Or the mouth can't say he wants to be a nose. It doesn't work that way. It takes all members of the same body to make up a usable, uh, usable body. Same it is with our church. Some of us are feet. Some of us are hands. Some of us are eyes. Some of us are mouths. Some of us are, are, are different parts of the body that, again, we're more than just a building. We're more than just... Uh, a group of people that desire to have FBT clubs. I love youth. I love teenagers. But again, if we are not working in the background, praying for these groups or, or helping a a assist in those ways, then we might as well close our doors and not even have them. If, we're, if we're, all we're doing is trying to get as many kids in that building as we possibly can, then we're doing it for the wrong reason. We're trying to help them. We're trying to disciple them. We're trying to help them overcome transgressions and sins. And they have broken spirits. Maybe you're here this morning and you have a broken spirit. And this message is for you. We want to first look at, number one, what is a broken spirit? What is a broken spirit? We see it here in our text. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, we could say sin, we could say trespass, what hunting season starts today, right, for the youth, 
Am I right with, with that? I think I overheard. So at Youth Hunt today, if Rusty were to take his boy, or Caleb actually, Uncle Caleb is going to be taking him out hunting. If he would go on a place that is, doesn't, he either didn't uh, get permission for, if he would trespass, if he would be in a place where he's not supposed to be, that's a trespass. That's uh, when God is saying a trespass in scripture or sin, missing the mark, going somewhere where you're not supposed to be, that is a sin. So one who is caught up in that, almost uh, not necessarily a perpetual sinning, but one who's just going down his Christian journey, then all of a sudden gets sideswiped by sin, more or less this is what this passage is talking about. A broken spirit, someone who is, who is, who is covered in sin and is trying to get out, but cannot figure, figure out how to. Holding your place here in Galatians, turn back in your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 7. I would like for you to see this. It's a lengthy passage and just didn't have room in the paper to, to put it all. But let's use our Bibles this morning. Luke chapter 7. Luke 7. And this is an incredible story. Because you have the tale of two sinners, if you will. In Luke chapter 7, we can really see who one of the sinners is. And picking up in verse number 36, we have the story of a sinful woman and how that she's forgiven Let's read together in verse 36. As I read, listen as what the word of God says. One of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at a table. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee, who had invited him, saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said to him, Notice this. Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, say it, teacher. We'll pick up here in just a moment. But here's the background story. Again, Jesus is invited to this house. And the Pharisee is, is, is thinking and, and is saying to himself, if he really was Jesus, if he really was a prophet, he would know how evil that woman really was. She made a living doing horrible and awful things. But yet... She was there with Jesus. She was pouring ointment on him. She was washing his feet. And she was begging Jesus. She had a broken spirit. Let's pick up again in verse number 41. And you can see in verse 40, the Pharisee is thinking to himself. And then all of a sudden, he realized Jesus knowing all things. Simon Peter, his own disciple, was thinking the same thing. And he said, Simon, could you imagine the room just, just shuddering? Simon getting so nervous. You know, here, Simon, this is your thoughts. Why is this woman touching Jesus, my Lord? Does, does he not know how evil she is? And then all of a sudden, Simon, I have something to say to you. Verse number 41, a certain money lender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they could not pay, he canceled both of the debt of both now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one I suppose for whom he canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, you have judged rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me, you gave me no water for my feet, but she had wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at the table began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Here she was a broken spirit. She was broken. She was caught up in any transgression. And we ask ourselves this question, Simon was not overwhelmed with God's amazing grace. 
He realized that, the, okay, on this side you have Simon, this, this Pharisee. I have Simon Peter, and here's this Pharisee. Simon on, on this side, you have the, the woman over here, and both are sinners. But Simon does not realize how large his debt really is. We think in that story, well, Christ used that illustration. Well, one had a large debt and one had not as large of a debt, a smaller debt. And thinking, well, one's Simon and one's this woman, this, this, uh, this adulterous woman. No, that's not at all. They both have a large debt. Simon doesn't realize how large his debt really was. Well, what was his debt? What did he need to be forgiven of? Well, Peter, or Simon here, Simon, he had a large debt. What was his debt? Lar lips that would not kiss, knees that would not bend, hands that would not serve, eyes that wouldn't weep, a soul that refused to change. His debt was large. He too was a broken spirit. He just didn't realize his sin. And the same can apply with us even today. We can easily judge and we can say, oh, well, that, that individual over there, I know how large their debt is. I know that they really need to be forgiven. But how often do we have that beam in our own eye that we tend to see others and say, oh, I can point out that, that, and that. But yet, our own selves, we too are broken. We too are caught up in sin. We too have, have a trespass that we cannot be forgiven of until we go to Jesus Christ and cast that to him. We're caught up in this sin. Let's give it over to God. What is a broken spirit? One that's caught up in a sin. One who was caught up in sin. P Peter, or Simon, excuse me, was not overwhelmed with God's amazing grace because he did not see what needed to be forgiven. Then we secondly ask our, this question, who can now help a broken spirit? Who can help heal a broken spirit? spirit. As we continue reading the first verse, brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual, you who are spiritual, it's up to the church. It's up to you to help them overcome this debt. It's up to you to help guide them and direct them and point them back to the Lord Almighty, the one who can forgive sins. You cannot forgive those sins, but you can help point in the right direction. You can help steer one another and guide one another. You who are spiritual. You who are spiritual. And notice the key word there, spiritual. Spiritual is the key word there. What does it mean to be spiritual? Well, if you back up in, in our text in Galatians chapter 5, those who are spiritual, beginning in verse number 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's being spiritual. Once we, we have those fruits of the Spirit within us, and we can help guide one another and love one another and, and provide patience and kindness and gentleness towards others who may be caught up in a spiritual trespass. It's a, as a church, we can help one another. We can guide one another. We should not beat one another. The, the Bible does that enough with us and takes out our knees and draws us to God. And that's where we as a church need to point others to get back to God, get back to him, get back to his goodness and guide one another and help one another. Who can help heal a broken spirit? Well, you who are spiritual, guiding them to the Lord. It says in Psalm 147, verse 3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord, he is the one who helps bind. He is the one who help, helps heal. He is the one that can forgive sins. But you, who are spiritual, can help guide them, can help direct them. And it's saying to bear one another's burdens, help heal broken spirits. And we ask this question, how can we help? What's the method? What's the, the proper technique, we could say, in helping heal broken spirits, in helping one another? How can I help? Well, number one, with a spirit of gentleness, with a spirit 
of gentleness. I hope I don't glue my fingers together, but I have an illustration here. I'm going to need uh, two helpers here. Benai, come on up, bud. Come on up, Isaac. I'm going to illustrate this with this word of faithfulness. All right. Benaiah, you stand here. You'll, you'll be church member number one. Come on up, Isaac. Come over here, bud. You're church member number two. All right. Here we have the tale of two church members. And Benaiah, he's 18 now. He gets it in his mind that he is really going to help guide and direct Isaac over here. He is going to be the one that's faithful to him and loyal to him. And so when Isaac hurts, Benaiah is going to hurt. So go ahead and without any kind of glue, go ahead and mash up the, the two pieces of paper together. Come on up over here. You guys are now, now together. If there's no faithfulness in this relationship, we put them back to back. Well, look how easily they are separated. All right. Now let's come across faithfulness, which is super glue. I hope that I don't glue this to the pulpit or I hope I don't glue it to my fingers. But here's faithfulness. Benaiah, being a faithful church member, he has all kinds of faithfulness. He's going to be faithful to his church. He's going to be faithful to each other. And now we mash those two together. It's like glue. It's like adhering to one another. Now that's faithfulness. We have church member one, church member one, church member, member two. Now try to separate it. I hope it's stuck. Oh, don't do it like that. You're cheating. It's not dried yet. I just glued my finger to it now. All right, try to separate it without being like that, you know. <laughs> he's, he's getting too picky. You know, he's getting his fingernail underneath it. Anyway, it's a little bit more difficult. All right, so now here's our illustration. They're, they're one body, one and two, they're one body. So look what happens. If Isaac gets hurt, look what happens to. Uh, Benaiah, he gets hurt as well. If something breaks in, in one member, it also you guys can have a seat. Thank you, guys. Now, all of a sudden, we're broken together. We are, we are assisting one another to the point where we are glued together. We're adhering to one another. And if we do not have faithfulness, my fingers are stuck together now. If we do not have faithfulness within our relationship with one another, then it's just going to separate it's going to pass away. It's just a surface relationship. There's nothing deep. There's nothing connecting the two together. It's just by words only. It's not uh, who Jesus is. I heard it said this past week about the Beatitudes. We often know about them. They're teachings of Jesus. Notice how they're not the do attitudes. It's not just a checklist. Well, I did this. I did that. I did this. And I did that. And I'm good for the week now. That's my checklist. I, I got to do this. And I'm good at checklists. I, I like that. However, when God wants us to be someone, when one, he wants us to identify with him, he wants us to be like Christ. And that is how we can help heal a broken spirit. By being like Christ. And not just making it a mere thing about checklists. Okay, well, I got to pray for my church today. So... Here it is. Pray for Brother St. Clair. Pray for Miss Vicky. Let's pray for Brother Charlie. And on and on we go. And that's my checklist. But where's the B in that? Am I, do I have a spirit of faithfulness? Am I adhering to them? Am I loving them to where I'm connected with them? Because if we're not, then it's just a surface relationship. It's nothing deep. There's nothing uh, to help heal that broken spirit. On one hand, have a spirit of faithfulness, but then also be gentle. Be gentle while we're faithful. Caring while ma maintaining humility. That was Jesus. Boy, that woman, she had a pretty egregious sin. Whereas Simon, you know, being a Pharisee, I'm sure that he was a good man on the surface. But yet, Jesus looking at the woman saying, no, her sins are forgiven. Her sins, which are so many, are forgiven. And Simon, you're missing the boat here. You're, you're missing the point that you too have been forgiven of a large debt. You cannot forget that. With a spirit of gentleness, being like glue, not able to, to go through a hard time without also breaking one another. 
And then as we're working together, as we're broken together, as we're, our hearts are, are mending together, as we're trying to help our church overcome difficult situations, we can heal together as well by a spirit of faithfulness, by a spirit of gentleness. And then as the scripture continues, verse number two, bear one another's burdens. So how can we help? How can I help bear a broken spirit? Well, number one, with the spirit of gentleness. And then number two, by bearing one another's burdens. When we help carry the crushing burden of one who has fallen in sin, that is helping us to number three, fulfill the law of Christ. It says in John 13, verse 34, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I, I have loved you, you also are to love one another. That's the law of Christ in a nutshell. And that allows us to bear one another's burdens if we're carrying one another, if we're faithful and we're adhering to one another. That as one is broken, one is going through some difficult times, so are we. And as Christ puts them back together, Christ is also helping us be put back together as well. That's what it means to bear one another's burdens. To uh, help the fellow believer that as they fall into temptation, rather than to kick them when they're down, to extend an arm of faithfulness and gentleness to them and help them back up and point them back to Christ so Christ can put us back together. Number four, and lastly as we close, how do I avoid the I am better than you attitude? Well, it says it right here. You may say, well, I've never fallen into that sin before. I've never fallen into that temptation before, so I can't help fix them. We're all sinners, right? As we are, 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 are able to overcome, and we that are spiritual, remember, that's the key word there, spiritual, meaning showing spirit, fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, long, uh, uh, kindness, patience, goodness, faithfulness, that whole list up in the fifth chapter, we say, well, I'm, I can't help them. I mean, I'm better than them. I've never fallen into that sin before, so I have to be, uh, I can't help them. Well, how do we avoid that? Number one, boast about Christ and not about ourselves. Boast about Christ and not about ourselves. But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. It says in the 14th verse of the same chapter. How do we avoid this? Number one, boast about Christ and not about ourselves. Let's continue reading. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Number, uh, verse 4, but let one test his own work. So secondly, how do we avoid this attitude? Test yourself. Test yourself. And then thirdly, carry your own load well. We exhibit... When we exhibit pride and gratitude to the Lord, when we're carrying our own load well, this backpack, it signifies a responsibility of us that, that we carry around, so to speak. And if we're carrying it, it well, if we're relying on God, we can help example to others to carry that load well. And again, that key word, spiritual, those who are spiritual, this passage of scripture is not for us to kick each other when we're down it's the exact opposite it's for us to reach down and pick one another up when they are down and by being spiritual by being showing love and showing temperance and showing faithfulness and showing gentleness we're showing characteristics of Jesus Christ that's what Christ did with that woman she was uh, falling all over Jesus, washing his feet, washing his head, taking care of him. And yet Simon, again, missed it. He thought that his debt was little, where he saw the woman. Her debt was this much. But no, in the eyes of Jesus Christ, in the eyes of God Almighty, a holy God, we're sinners. And we need a Savior. And when we fall into sin, we need to help pick one another up. We need to help bear one another's burdens. We cannot kick each other when we're down. 
So let us avoid this better than you attitude. Isaiah 40, verse 29. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Encouraging passage of scripture there. Again, church, remember, be faithful to one another. Let's not be separate and this side versus this side and this group versus that group or red versus green. I know we're getting tricky situations, especially harvest time. But again, when we're talking about spiritual things, those are all superficial. We joke around, of course. But when we're talking about Jesus Christ, when we're talking about God's book, and we're talking about this Christian walk, let us be faithful to one another. Let's bind ourselves together so that when one is hurting, we're hurting as well. Church, will you stand with me? We're going to close with a word of prayer. And we'll close with, with that song that we sang uh, for uh, offertory. Church, let's close in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness. God, we ask that you'll help us to be faithful to you. But Lord, in return, help us to be faithful to one another. Lord, as we look at the faces of everyone who makes up the Fulton Baptist Temple, I pray that we'll be faithful to them, that we'll love them, we'll care for them, that as they're down, we'll too reach out and help them. Help us to be spiritual. Help us to show the characteristics of Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. This last song this morning is the one we did for offertory, so it's a new one. But what a great line that keeps repeating in there. That our sins, they are many, but his mercy is more. And if we're to be like Jesus, if we're to, to be like him and to want to, um, to obey him to the fullest, we understand that it's not just us, that all of our sins are many. His mercy is more. Our mercy should be more as well. We look to imitate Christ. could remember no wrongs we have done. A mission all-knowing, he counts not their sum. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is Let's pray. We are fully aware, Lord, of, of how many our sins are. 
And sometimes we want to pretend that they're not. Sometimes we want to pretend that they're different than others. Sometimes we want to pretend that they're not as many as others. But God, we all know that sin is sin, and we all, um, we all share in that curse. And um, Lord, we know that Jesus came. But because of his love, he died on the cross, that your mercy, that we didn't, we're not going to get what we deserve because we deserve hell. And Lord, we know that because of your grace, you're going to give us something that we don't deserve. That's eternal life. That's being in your presence forever and ever and ever. We thank you for that salvation that was given to us, that price that was paid for us on the cross. And Lord, that we wouldn't just hold that in to ourselves, that we wouldn't just hold on to it as, as something to be held above everyone else. But Lord, that we would be humble, that we would be kind and gentle, and that we would be ready to, um, to be the spiritual one, the one um, that you would help us to live a life that is pure, and that we would be ready to um, help in a character of gentleness. Lord, that we would be all brought back into your family. We look forward to the day that we don't have to deal with those things. We look forward to the day where all of those things are gone and all that we know is you and your goodness. As we go through this week, Lord, that you would help us um, as those things, it, it's not always going to be good. But I pray that you would strengthen us and encourage us and that we would have the spirit that you have of kindness and gentleness. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. It's glad to see everyone here this morning. Jeremy's got one more announcement. I got one more announcement. I can never stop talking. But uh, again, last week we welcomed uh, two families to our church. And this week we're also going to welcome the Arthurs. Uh, Brother Marty and Miss Kathleen uh, have, have joined, officially joined our church. And we want to welcome them. Uh, we want to pray for them as well. So Caleb, will you come up and have a word of prayer uh, for the uh, uh, Arthur family? I know we've been praying a lot, but that's okay. We're a praying church. And uh, we'll, they'll be in the back. Please welcome them to our church. And, um, but if you will now, you come and have a word of prayer. All right, let's pray. Dear Father, thank you so much for being able to accept another member into our church. We thank you so much for that. And we just pray for a great week that we would use what we listen to today and we use it in our lives and we would learn to obey you every day of our life, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Enjoy your week.